Just hours away from President Biden's second State of the Union address here on Capitol Hill, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says while the president has, quote, accomplishments to discuss tonight, he says that Republicans are only offering the American people, quote, rhetoric. So Republicans are, in, are stuck. They can't govern. They can't agree on anything. I, instead, they're focused on political theater. They don't do any, they're not trying to do anything real. And we hope they won't continue to do this on something as important as the surveillance balloon. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell joins me now exclusively. <clears throat> Leader McConnell, always good to have you with us. Thanks yeah, for coming by today. So you heard Chuck Schumer there, the Senate Majority Leader, <laughs> say that, you know, they're going to talk about accomplishments tonight, and all you folks ever want to talk about is just rhetoric. Uh, well, the House Republicans who are setting the agenda have been quite busy passing legislation. It's been the Senate, actually, for a month now. It's done virtually nothing. So I'm curious as to what Senator Schumer may have in mind for us to, to do. So since you bring up the House, um, Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy, the Speaker, I should say, uh, says that he wants to see spending cut in exchange for the debt ceiling. Uh, he said, you know, there are ways that you can sort of start to touch some of these areas without touching some of the ones that are more difficult politically, maybe, um, to, to begin that process. Are you on board with him on that? I am. I, actually, Joe Biden and I did this back in 2011. He was delegated by the president to deal with me as the leader of my party in the Senate. <clears throat> we negotiated the budget. Control Act, which actually reduced spending for two years in a row for the first time since right after the Korean War. So the president knows that he, he himself has a history of negotiating in connection with uh, the debt ceiling. So I think what the speaker is asking him to do is not unreasonable and certainly uh, within precedent. So you recently uh, moved Senator Scott and Senator Lee off of, of the Commerce Committee. And, and here's what Senator Rick Scott of Florida said about his attitude about that. Mm -hmm. Watch this. I'm going to keep doing my job. Um, so I put out a plan. Um, you know, he completely opposed me, put out a plan. I believe that everybody, everybody up here, this is, this is not a Republican or Democrat issue. We all ought to be putting out our ideas and fight over our ideas up here. So what do you say to Senator Scott, and why did you remove yeah, him well, and Senator Lee? Yeah, well, he had a temporary assignment on the committee, the way we do things, for two years. Uh, he could have traded in one of his permanent committees for commerce and stayed on it. Uh, he had a temporary assignment. There were others who wanted it, and I gave it to two other senators. Um, no particular reprisal in mind. I had no animus toward Rick Scott at all. He says it's because he ran against you for leadership. Well, that's just not true. <laughs> so, and he also says that he's, you know, has the most business background of anybody on the committee and that he believes he deserves to be there. But you're saying he had the opportunity to stay if he wanted to? He could have picked that as one of his two main committees. I, there were others who wanted a temporary assignment on commerce in addition to him. I ended up giving it to Senator Capito and Senator Lummis, both of whom I think would argue that they too could be good members of the Commerce Committee. All right, let me, let me go back to this <clears throat> Chinese spy craft, spy balloon, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the Wall Street <clears throat> Journal today, sort of with tongue-in-cheek on the editorial page, says, seen any other spy balloons lately? An $850 billion defense budget, and we can't detect a Chinese airship. We're now learning that there were, and let's put up this map, 10 chi similar Chinese spy flights uh, that made it into American territorial waters all the way from Guam to South Carolina, and then one is in uh, Latin America. I is this acceptable? Look, I I'm one of the gang of eight, one of eight people entitled to, <clears throat> to know virtually everything in the intelligence field. I'd never heard anything about this. And <laughs> regardless of whether we knew about it in the past, let's just focus on what did happen last week. <clears throat> It seems to me hard to explain why you would let this balloon, beginning in the Aleutian Islands, lots of open space, not many people below, Alaska, Canada, and wait until it got into the Atlantic Ocean after surveying all of American uh, territory to shoot it down. I mean, we have lots of questions to ask, not only 
why did you not know this has happened in the past, but why did you deal with this uh, the way you did? I was looking at a survey this morning that said only 13% of the American people thought the State of the Union was strong. Mm. This is the kind of weak reaction, coupled with things like withdrawing from Afghanistan, that haphazard way that we did that in uh, 2021, that leave the American people with the impression that the country's not doing well. Raging crime, open borders, inflation going through the roof. No wonder only 13% of the American people think the state of our economy is strong. Senator McConnell, leader, thank you very much. It's always good to have you with us. Thanks thank for coming you. by the studio today. Big night ahead. Your 38th, right? At least 38th <laughs> yeah. State of the Union address. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. Good to have you with us. Thank you.